OpenAI just released two open weight models, GPT OSS 20B and GPT OSS 120B. The number one takeaway is that these open source, open weight models perform comparably to their proprietary counterparts, which are O3 Mini and O4 Mini respectively. The second really important takeaway is that these models are optimized for efficient deployment on consumer hardware. 20B will run quite comfortably on your work laptop or even your phone. That's great for offline and even private use. 120B requires a bit more oomph, like a dedicated GPU, but not nearly as much as other open source models with similar performance. It really is this combination of strong performance and efficiency that make this announcement so compelling. These models are cheap, fast, they're capable, fine tunable, and because they're open source, you are in complete control of how you host them. If you've maybe dismissed open source models for lagging behind proprietary ones, now could be the time to reevaluate. These models are the results of millions, maybe even billions of dollars in research and development, and they're the first cutting edge US models. Like Rob here, I'm excited about using these models with my local coding editor. Claude Pro Max is expensive, while GPT OSS is cheap. If the performance holds up, I could save some money and even code offline, like on a plane. This guy gets it. Now, if you're building AI agents, for example, with Mastra, the best framework, by the way, these models represent a huge opportunity. Because they're cheaper, you can move fast without racking up a big API bill. You can also host them on-prem, which gives you more control. This is especially important if you're in a regulated industry or care about enterprise privacy. Greg Eisenberg here identifies these as the biggest opportunities, and I agree. I'm making this video to help you get up to speed with the new models and maybe capitalize on these opportunities. I'll even teach you how to run the models locally using LM Studio and how to build a local AI agent using Mastra. It will take just a couple of minutes at the end. Both these models are Apache 2.0 licensed, which means they're suitable for commercial use. They're both reasoning models with tool calling capabilities, which means they're suitable for building agents. You can configure the reasoning level, and as you can see here, the model outputs the chain of thought reasoning. So they have some similarities. What is the difference between them and how do you pick the right one for your project? Well, look at the number in the model name. This indicates the number of parameters in the model, and that's really the only difference between them. More parameters generally means more performance, but it also means the model needs more memory to run. 20B requires just 16 gigabytes of RAM, which I think was a very intentional target by OpenAI because most modern laptops and phones have 16 gigabytes to play with. The 120B model, yeah, you can technically run it on a high-end consumer machine, but practically most people don't have access to a machine powerful enough. You need like the top of the top MacBook Pro or a gaming PC with a $2,000 graphics card or something. And even then, I reckon it might be a bit slow compared to the hosted models. I'm not sure. You know, machines will get more powerful and the models will get more efficient. So that's exciting. The real draw today, I think, of the 120B model is that it's powerful and you have control about where and how you host the model. That could be on-prem, which is great for privacy, security, compliance, or you could use a provider like Grok or Cerebrus. I'm looking at Open Router, or Open Router here, and O4 Mini. If I search for 120B and open that in a split, it's quite interesting to compare them. You can see the 120B has a slightly smaller context window, that's worth noting, but it's also dramatically cheaper. The output is about eight times cheaper, but the performance is not eight times worse. While you can self-host these models through Open Router, you can explore and use different providers like Base 10, Fireworks, I already mentioned Grok and Cerebrus. The pricing is very competitive and I think it dramatically lowers the barrier for indie hackers, startups, and anyone who doesn't want to break the bank to bring a useful agent to market or to their organization. Something interesting is emerging as well because you can see the throughput numbers here are looking very tasty. Cerebrus in particular seems to be optimizing their like inference essentially, showing that when you have access to the open source model, innovation starts to happen. You're probably wondering how these models compare with each other, how they compare with other open AI models, and of course, how they compare with other open source models in general. 
OpenAI released their own benchmarks with the announcement, comparing the open source models with other OpenAI models. I prefer to use artificial and artificial analysis. I keep twisting my tongue over that one. They have independent benchmarks comparing these new open source models with every popular model. According to the performance index, 120B is in position 10 overall and position three among open source models, narrowly beating GLM 4.5. What the index doesn't really take into account is the model size and model efficiency. This Quen Free model, for example, requires substantial resources to run compared to 120B. I would also recommend that you zoom in on the specific benchmarks that relate to your particular use case for a more nuanced view. The same company, Artificial, Artificial Analysis, I just have to roll with that one, have a really good summary here on X. If you're feeling particularly meta, take that summary and paste it into the GPT OSS playground to summarize it further. That could be fun. I actually did that earlier and it highlighted the same things I mentioned at the beginning. It's that intelligence to size ratio, highly efficient, deployment friendly, and it's competitive with Frontier Labs despite being open and affordable. So there's a lot to rave about. I might even write home about it, but I don't work for OpenAI. I don't have a stake in whether you use it or not. My role at Mastra is to help you build great, reliable AI agents. And that requires a grounded perspective, not just the excitement. So I think it's fair that I touch on a couple of limitations. One quirk, I guess, is that GPT OSS is heavily biased towards English. It doesn't seem great or even good at other languages like German. I also want you to remember that it's comparable to O3 Mini and O4 Mini, but it's maybe not like quite as good in every situation. And it's definitely not as good as 4.0 and other Frontier models. So you still need to evaluate it based on your use case. And frankly, sometimes when you're building an agent, you are willing to spend a bit more to get the most predictable and best outputs um, because you are sometimes going against the grain, right? Agents can be a bit fiddly and using those superior models can sometimes be the right thing to do. There are some like just limitations as well. Like GPT OSS is not multimodal. It doesn't have built-in tools and that kind of thing. Speaking of tools, there is a lot of discussion on X around how providers handle tool calling via a new output format called Harmony. I learned only very recently that the model itself does not execute the tool. Instead, the inference backend or runtime like Grok or LM Studio, if you're running it locally, handles that for us. It seems like there's an inconsistency in Harmony support across inference backends. The reason I know this is because here's a screenshot from the OpenRooter CEO. They have a good vantage point and an insight into how these providers are performing. Whether this success rate is good or bad, I mean, I think 42.5 is bad, you can see that the numbers differ and that's where the kind of inconsistency is coming from. I've also experienced a couple of quirks in uh, LM Studio as well. But yeah, this is early stage stuff. So as Kevin notes here, these inconsistencies are expected and will likely stabilize as tooling catches up with the modal capabilities. Now you know all about GPT OSS, let me teach you how to build a little Hacker News agent using GPT OSS 20B locally with Mastro. The first thing you need to do is download a tool called LM Studio. This is a great interface to search and download and run models locally. Because GPT OSS 20B is so popular right now, it will probably prompt you to install it when you first open the app. And if for some reason it doesn't, you can hit the search tab and find it in here. I already have it installed. The file is about 12 gigabytes. And so give it a moment to download. Once it's downloaded, you need to load the model. To do that, go to chat. And if you don't see these tabs on the left, it might be because you've got user selected down here. You wanna have power user selected. And then at the top here, you can pick from your local models. I'm going to click GPT OSS 20B and honestly hope for the best because this basically loads the 12 gigabytes model into memory and I'm recording my screen right now. So in fact, when I first loaded LM Studio or rather loaded this model in LM Studio, it warned me that it might crash my computer and I had to disable the safety precautions. If you get the same messages, you can probably do the same, but they're there for a reason. You might crash your computer and lose progress on your files and stuff like that. So I take no responsibility for that. But yeah, check it out. The model is now running. I can say hello. It's talking to GPT OSS 20B and it responds. And of course it outputs the uh, chain of thought reasoning just like I demonstrated earlier. Now, what we're going to do, and if you don't know Mastra, by the way, it's a TypeScript agent framework. It allows you to code agents and 
and workflows using TypeScript, and it supports a bunch of different models via the uh, AI SDK providers. That detail will become important in a second. It's just to say that if we want to connect to a local model, we first need to click on the developer tab and start the model, or rather start a local web server that exposes the model. Now the local server is reachable at this address. We'll copy that to the clipboard and keep it in mind. And then in a terminal here, I've got the create master utility. This enables you to scaffold a master project based on a template. We've pre-created one for this little hacker news agent uh, that you uses the open AI GPT OSS models, run that and give your project a name, change directory into open AI OSS. And I'm just gonna use Vim here because I'm so cool and go to the agents file. And even though there's no syntax highlighting, you can see that we are using the create open AI compatible function to connect to the uh, open source local model at the URL. I copied the URL to my clipboard um, just to show you that it's the same. Uh, local LM Studio will choose the same port if it's available, I think. But now we can run the server. And if you're new to Mastra, something that's really cool is that we provide a playground that makes it really easy to test things out. Here's the Hacker News agent. The first thing you'll observe is that the model is GPT OSS 20B. That's awesome. I can just say hello to kick things off, but in a moment, I would like to utilize some of these Hacker News to find out. Oops, can you still, my web, my computer is literally crashing. I have 16 gigs of RAM, so I'm really pushing my luck here. Um, what are the top posts on Hacker News? This should invoke the Hacker News tool. And you can see uh, it's reasoned that it needs to use the get stories tool. It calls the get stories tool. It gets the content, gets the content rather. You'll have to excuse me. I'm feeling a bit nervous <laughs> that my computer's about to crash. I really need to set up my new, uh, this new MacBook has 24 gigs of memory. So I've got a good motivation now to get that up and running. Um, check it out. It's returned a table with the top posts on Hacker News using the GPT OSS 20B model. How cool is that? So yeah, hopefully now you have a good grasp on what the models are all about, why it's exciting. And I just want to demonstrate that you can run it locally and you can run it locally to achieve something productive like building a genuinely useful agent using Mastro.